Hey guys, in today's video, we are going to talk about the CSS width and height properties. I will also be showing how to give a minimum and maximum value to the width and height properties because it is very important for responsive design. So let's begin with creating an element here. Let me create a div and assign it a class of a box. Now what I want to do is to give this class a background color. So box and I will assign a background color of let's say red. Now when I save it, nothing happened. So why is that? Let's inspect the web page. As we can see, our div element is created and it is here, but we don't see actually anything because the content of this div element is empty. Every HTML element's size, such as width and height, are assigned automatically. They take an automatic value. If there is no content inside this box, then this div element's width and height properties will be automatically zero. So that's why we don't see anything here yet. But when I come here and assign, let's say, a width of 50 pixels, we still don't see anything because the height is still zero. So let's also assign a height property. And now when I save it, now our box is there. So now let me clear these two again. And this time I would like to put here inside some content, just some text. And now let's save it. This time we are able to see our red box. And now what I would like to do this time to assign a fixed width property. Let's say 100 pixels. This time we see that the height increases because since we assigned 100 pixels to this div, now it's not possible to take more than that. So that's why its height increased. Additionally, if I also give a height property of 100 pixels and save it, now our box has taken a 100 pixels of width and height, but the content is much larger than that. So that's why it has overflowed, but there is a way to fix this. Sometimes such things can happen. So there is also an overflow property, which allows us to hide the overflowed part. If we assign a hidden value to our overflow property and save it, we won't be able to see the overflowed part anymore. Or as an alternative, we can assign a scroll property. This time we will be able to scroll the element and see the complete content. Now let's talk a little bit about the minimum and maximum values that we can assign. So for example, this time I'm going to define here a width property of 100%. And I am going to assign a minimum width of 200% pixels okay now this is something is necessary for responsive design once the page or the screen size gets smaller than 200 pixels a scroll bar appears because our elements width cannot be smaller than 200 pixels so that's why a scroll bar appears and and it cannot get smaller than that so this means that normally this element will always take the, the whole 100% of space of the web page until our page is smaller than 200 pixels. So once our page reaches this limit, then it won't get smaller than that and a scroll bar will appear this time for the web page. Now in addition, we can also give, we can also change this as a maximum width. Let's make it a little bit larger. Now, this time, our element will take 100% of width until it reaches this 300 pixels limit. So let's make it larger. As we can see, it keeps growing and growing until it reaches 300 pixels. So once our div element reaches 300 pixels of width, as we can see, it just stays like that and it's it's not going to grow larger than that. 
this is some kind of useful for larger screens if you are going to design a website and you don't want the content always to take 100 uh, percent sometimes it doesn't look good for larger screens then you can assign a maximum width and it will keep the whole website or the elements that you wish in a given size and if you prefer you can also centralize this element by assigning a margin auto property what this property does it will centralize our content so regardless of how large the website is your main content will always stay in the center unless it is smaller than 300 pixels once the web page or the device is smaller than 300 pixels then the 100 percent of width size will apply again now if you prefer you can also use a minimum or a maximum value for the height property let's say i will assign a 100 pixels of maximum height now as we can see the same thing happens again since there is not enough space for the content it will overflow or you can say i would like to have a minimum height of let's say 400 pixels and this time as we can see the height of our box will be larger than the content itself so guys this is how we can use the minimum and the maximum values for width and height properties i hope you enjoyed this video and if you do please hit the like button thank you guys for watching and see you in another video